Welcome to another video. Suppose we take a number and we list out all the divisors of the number. That is every number that divides the number n. Well, n is a positive number. Well, the first number you're going to write is 1. And the last number that divides n is n itself. And then you have some other numbers in the middle that all divide n. And that's what this list uh, refers to. Now, if you take all of these numbers, the divisors that have been listed, and you sum all of them up, you're going to get 75. This question is to find the sum of all the reciprocals of the divisors. At first, this appears to be like a very technical problem, but it's not. It's a very basic knowledge that you should have, especially if you do math competitions. Let's get into the video. So before I go into the technicalities of this problem, let me just take an example, okay? So let's take the number 3. Let's say n is equal to 3. Then the divisors of 3 would be 1 and 3. That's it. Those are the divisors. Now, if you add up the divisors of 3, you're going to have um, 1 plus 3 equals 4. So this now is representing our 75. So the question is what will be the sum of the reciprocals of the divisors. So I'm going to have 1 over 1 plus 1 over 3. Notice that when you add 1 to 1 third, you're going to get 4 thirds. You see that the two numbers, that two numbers have appeared. This 4 and this 3. So let's say that we pick the number 12, for example, or 10. Let's do 10, okay? So if we have 10, the divisors of 10, let's say n equals 10, the divisors of 10 will be 1, 2, 5, and 10. Okay? Now, the sum of these numbers will be equal to 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus 10 equals 18. What about the reciprocals? It would be 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 5 plus 1 over 10. Well, if you try to give them a common denominator, now this is the key to answering this question. If you want to give all of them a common denominator, this has to be 10 over 10. And this has got to be 5 over 10. This is going to be 2 over 10. And this has got to be... Um, plus 1 over 10. Now notice that the common denominator is going to be 10. And the top is 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus 10, which is the same thing as 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus 10. Do you see it? So you can already see that there's a pattern of answers. Okay? One more, and then I'll write the whole thing. You can see what the answer is going to be. So this is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 5 plus 10. If you add up all the top, it's going to be 18. Again, it's similar to this. It is that sum divided by the number. It is that sum divided by the number. So if n equals 4, the factors are 1, 2, and 4. So that you're going to have 1 plus 2 plus 4 equals 7. And 1 over 1 plus 1 over 2 plus 1 over 4 is going to be equal to, let's see what we get. Um, this is going to be 4 over 4 plus 2 over 4 plus 1 over 4. That gives us still 7 over 4. Just as I arranged the numbers from the smallest to the biggest, I'm going to try to arrange the numbers. We're just going to make that assumption. Okay, so we're going to say, let x1 be less than or equal to x2. Let's do k minus 2. Be less than or equal to x to the k minus 1. Less than or equal to x to the k. Okay, so we've arranged all the factors of n. Okay, 
we can clearly see that x1 must be equal to 1 and x sub k must be equal to n by observation. The very last divisor will be the biggest divisor and it has to be the number itself. And the very first divisor, if you arrange in this order, will have to be this one. And a trend is established. Then x1 times x sub k must be equal to n because this is 1 times n. Okay, let me write it. Equals 1 times n, which is equal to n. If you pick the next one here, okay, x multiplied by this one here. Um, let's call it x sub k minus 1 will be equal to n also. So when, look at this. If you, where, where do I have multiple? Look at the 10 one. Look at this one. 1 times 10 gives you 10. 2 times 5 gives you 10. That's how you keep going. You keep going. You keep going. Now, if it is an even number of terms, uh, is it even? If it is an odd number of terms, the middle one will have to be a square. So if you multiply it by itself, it will have to give you n. Okay? And like so. And then you go x to the third times x to the k minus 2 will have to also be n. And this goes on, okay, until you get to the last one. Um, x to the, I don't want to use, let's say alpha times x sub k minus, well, I've been subtracting to minus alpha plus 1 is also has got to be n, no matter what this alpha is, okay? Now, if there's an even number, then it's going to be by itself, okay? So this multiplying itself will have to be n, which means in a case like this, 2 multiplying itself will have to be equal to n, which means it's a square, okay? That's the understanding that I've just shown here. And all you have to do is just begin to write the reciprocals. So now let's find what we're supposed to find. We want to find the sum of all reciprocals, okay? So we're going to start from, um, this is, we're using i now. I know I used alpha here. Maybe I should have used i. Yeah. I would be the best index because I already have I in the problem. So this is I and this has to be, um, hey, not X, it's I. Come on, that's it. Okay, so here I know that this is going to be equal to 1 over X1 plus 1 over X2 plus top, 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 plus 1 over here I'm going to have, let me just write the last two. Um, x to the k, um, k minus 1 plus 1 over x sub k. Okay, so I'm adding all of these reciprocals together. But if you go here, if x1, x sub 1 times x sub k is n, that means that x sub 1 equals n divided by x sub k, n over x sub k. So that if you write the reciprocal of x, x sub 1, you're flipping this. So this is going to be equal to x sub k over n. If you go here, it's going to be x sub k minus 1 over n plus tap, 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 Plus, when you get here, it's going to be the counterpart of this. This is going to be, see, when you get to x of k minus 1, remember, whatever you multiply to this to get n is what's now going to be on top, which was this. This is going to be x sub 2 over n, and this is going to be um, x 
sub 1 over n. And we know x sub 1 was actually 1 in the first place, but we don't care. Okay, here, the denominator for all the sum is n. So basically what we have is n. And you can just add up all of the sum, which is going to be x sub k plus x sub k minus 1 plus plus x sub 2 plus x sub 1. So what do you have? Well, we know the sum because they gave us. Ta -ta -da -da. It was 75 in this case. And what is n? We don't know. They never gave us n. So this is our answer. It's 75 over n. Now that we found our answer to be 75 over n, the question is, what really is the number n? Well, the point of this exercise is to be able to understand the behavior of numbers like this, especially considering their divisors. There is no such n. There is no positive integer that behaves like this. The sum of the divisors is never 75. Okay, so you, by trial and error, you would not have gotten this answer because you'll try every number and they will all fail. And that's the fact. There is no n that has the sum of its divisors equal to 75 if 1 and n are included in the divisors. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.